Hello, everyone. In this video, I, I would like to share some tips about the uh, paper writing. So uh, let's first ha have a look at the how to develop the paper story. Okay, the storytelling is a fundamental element of a, a successful paper. So the structure I used in most of my papers is, is the one that, that, that is shown right now. Motivation, gap, objective, and then outcome significance. Then go back. So motivation and background. So in the very beginning, we should tell people what is the research problem we are trying to study and why it is an important problem, okay? And what is the research background? And then we should use uh, however to stress the gaps and research challenges. We have to stress the gaps and in a, in a very uh, high level because, because we want people to understand what are, the, what are the pains in this to solve these problems so that you are starting a very important problem to address a very important gap in the state of the art. And now the gap will set up the step stone for you to propose new research objective. Okay, and also the approach you're gonna use to achieve this objective. So that's how, how you are gonna solve this problem. So first, you're gonna do what? And second, third, and then finally. So in the end, you're gonna talk about the experimental results and, uh, and the outcomes of this research. Of course, you should use the last sentence to stress the significance of the, this research investigation. So this is the storytelling structure. Now I'm gonna show you some papers that I, some sample papers that I use this structure. So first let's have a look at this, this paper published in Chaos 2014. Um, so as you can see the structure here, this is uh, the first one that is uh, motivation and the background. Okay, so this is talking about what is the recurrence and what is, what is the background, process monitoring. And then this is a gap, however, NITO has been done, okay, to do what? And uh, the gaps, traditional methods are based on this, which treat this, which treat all recurrence as in the same way and non-recurrence as this. And, uh, but heterogeneous recurrence is more concerned about this. Okay, very little has been done to in, in investigate the heterogeneous recurrence. And now this paper presents an approach to study this. Okay, so then the, it comes out the, uh, the research objective. And then we develop, further we develop what? To that end, to achieve this objective, we used we use the what kind of approach. And this is outcome, experimental results show that um, not only capture, but also effectively monitor. You see, this is a structure, storytelling structure. And this storytelling can be done in different ways. If you look at this statement, so those are, those are the two statements summarize the whole paper. You will see the same structure. You see, this is uh, talking about sensing. Okay, and then process monitoring. However, traditional method, methods doesn't work that well. And very little has been done to study the heterogeneous recurrence. Okay. And if we characterize the heterogeneous recurrence and why it is so important, right? Bring what kind of advantage? So this paper objective, right? And then we did the experiments, show what kind of outcomes did we get. And uh, this is work is extensible to different kind of uh, continuous state space. 
okay so this actually this comes to the significance if we look at a different paper so this is another paper publishing automation science and engineering let's look at the abstract okay why this sensor network has emerged as a key uh, technology this is a background okay motivation and background because it's very important a key technology okay and it can be used in different places however sensor failures are very common right okay as such we propose the design of what okay realize this sensor network however depends on the development of information processing algorithms okay uh, which is not necessarily available so this paper presents a new approach to for the information processing in the stochastic sensor networks and then how did we do it this is the approach first further and then therefore spatial temporal process closely interact with each other now it comes to the outcomes experimental results shows what in the end the effectiveness and uh, and some significance okay and even the note for practitioners i try to write it in the storytelling um, way so this paper is motivated motivation okay and this system allows what but need need you see here this is important but so this is actually the gap and then this paper objective and this is the outcome so you see this kind of structure not only in the abstract but also in the note to practitioners and uh, even in the introduction i just expanded the structure a little bit for example this paragraph talk about why is sensing okay you can read this part this is actually the motivation and this is the background distributed sensing now it comes you see if if, if it is comes to the gap and a challenge it will be the however you see a word called however now this is a gap now when the gap and challenge are described now it's time to talk about what is this paper is doing right so this paper uh real-time distribution sensing bring great levels so this paper is it these are still the talking about opportunity what needs to be done okay and then this paper presents a new approach and then we first do what you see first and then further after further then the experimental results and a significance now it comes to the paper structure you see here even in even in the introduction i'm trying to use the the same storytelling structure okay in in the in abstract in note to pr practitioners and introduction now this is another paper healthcare paper did we use the same structure now let's look at it so this one is the uh, motivation and background i even give an example and tell people what is uh what is the problem because people don't understand when people get into the icu what kind of variables they are they are connected okay then it becomes a data rich however now the gap and the challenges they are missing variables missing variables cause a lot of problems right so the challenge and then there's a need to do what okay because there's an urgent need so this article the objective we have to have a sentence talking about what we are trying to do so this is the objective after this objective we evaluate with the experiments experimental results or outcomes okay and then here comes to the significance you see this is a way to write the abstract if you look at the introduction pretty much they're talking about same thing but it just give a little bit more details for example motivation and background i write a little bit more with a little bit of reference and now it comes to the gaps but the gaps 
I try to uh, itemize the gaps, gaps one, gaps two, gaps three. And now the missing data are still challenges, causing problems. And people die, traditional methods, that doesn't work for the high dimensional correlation structures. So therefore the objective approach. And then the significant research outcomes. Okay, so this is uh, how I do the storytelling in different papers. Now let's move on to the next part. Okay. In order to write a good paper, first we need to have a good skeleton as we discussed before. Now, if we look at the, now let me use uh, another paper to illustrate the skeleton. So you see, this is a skeleton. So the structure of the paper in many of my papers or many other papers, it is organized in this way. Introduction, research background, talking about the literature review. And many people try to mix the literature review together with the introduction. They put all the literature review in the introduction and then mix them together. That's, that's terrible. And I, I hope you guys can learn the way how we did this, uh, how I did the uh, arrangement of introduction and research background. And try to separate the different uh, categories and then talk about the gaps in each category. Okay, you see here, this is an introduction. And then this is a research background. Okay, talk about the, what has been done right now and what are the gaps. And then it comes to the research methodology, experimental design, and then results. So here, I used to separate the experiment design and the results, but this one, in this paper, I, I combine these two together. And in the end is the discussion conclusions. Okay, of course we have reference. We have already talked about how to organize the reference. Now, if, you, if we look at those papers, because I try to use two page scrolling uh, view, you will be able to see the structure better. So introduction, introduction, come to all the way here, you see, and then research background. After research background, this is a research methodology. Okay, so in research methodology, we have approached different, uh, um, different steps, A. So this is A, B, C. Okay, so the, the A, B, and C, so research methodology. Now it comes to the materials and the experimental design. So how did I design the experiments and what kind of data did we use or materials did we use? And then it comes to the results of each design experiment. So you see A corresponding to A, and then we have B and corresponding to B and C corresponding to C. Now it comes to the discussion. Many times the discussion, because the reviewer has some additional comments, needs us to do more experiments. So we add a discussion, add more experiments. So this is what happened. And then the end of the conclusions. And don't forget, sometimes we need to acknowledge our sponsors. You see the reference format is a little different right, right here. And if you look at other papers, even IEEE, you see introduction. Introduction, research, uh, research background. I missed the research background right here. And then research methodology. Then you separate them into, you should have a flow chart to illustrate your research methodology. And section A, B, and C. And after that, you are going to have materials and experimental design. And after you design the experiments, you have results of each experiment. Okay. And in the end, you talk about the conclusion. This is the IEEE reference format. If it comes to the uh, healthcare paper, like this one, healthcare systems engineering, in IISE transactions, you will see the same structure, introduction, research background, research methodology, okay, experimental design and materials. So it includes simulation study and a real world case study. Now it comes to the experimental results and conclusions, acknowledgement, funding acknowledgement. 
So the reference format, again, is a little different. So this is how we, uh, in our group, how did we do the paper organization? Now let's get back to see the, see the formatting. So in the formatting, I hope you guys to use the font of Area font or Times New Roman. Area font has an advantage that is you can use a smaller font size like 10. You see, this is, is 10.5. However, it's about the same size as the, it's, it's even bigger than the 11 font size of Times New Roman. And try to use those, these two. And you can also use Korea New and uh, Palatino. And however, those are the commonly used. Okay, area, I prefer area all the time, all the times New Roman. In times New Roman, you need a bigger font size. And when you do the formatting, try to separate the major section set uh, heading and then subheading, sub subheading. So this is heading one, two, and uh, three, okay? That would be heading three. So you see here in this paper, I have heading one, heading two, okay? So the position uh, section titles at the left main left margin. So you need to learn how to use the indentation. And then the second sub, uh, subheading and then indent a little bit more for the second subheading. And then sub subheading, learn how to use the indentation. You see the style is a little bit different. Uppercase, bold, uppercase, but italized. And then this is not bold. Oh, this one is not uppercase. This is bold, but italized. This one is not bold, but it's underlined. Okay, so this is uh, two tabs. This is one tab, okay? So this is how we do the formatting. Now it comes to how to write for the reviewers of how to write for your readers. You see people, you may be told by a colleague or your friend said, it makes no difference. You can write whatever you want, but the science will shine. If you have good science, it will shine through. Is this true? No, definitely not, okay? Nothing could be farther from the truth. How you write can make a great deal of differences in the relatively, um, uh, the, the, uh, the how you paper will be uh, uh, clearly understood by, by your reviewers or the readers. It must be the, it must be maximally reviewer friendly. So you must write with maximum clarity and precision. So each word must be the right word and each must be chosen carefully to relate meaning to its labors. And every sentence must be crafted to convey exactly the message that you wanted to impart. Every paragraph must flow logically out of the ones that have preceded it, so that a story builds clearly and vividly in the mind of a reviewer. Okay, so the story structure. This is not easy. It's actually a really hard work. But the more you write, the more you will understand my storytelling structure. So if you have a really badly written or unclear material, rarely will a reviewer take the time to decipher I mean, they are not going to write it for you or explain stuff for you. They just take what you have and they are, they are trying to, they're trying to find problems in a paper, okay? That's reviewer's job because they're trying to control the quality of the paper. And uh, they, wanna, they wanna reject those papers that are not, that are, that are not well written, that are poorly written. And they wanna, they wanna take some very well written papers, okay? So don't believe the, this kind of uh, uh, saying like uh, the science will shine through, the gold will shine, no matter how deep it is buried in the, in, the, in the mud. How, you know, so this kind of science will shine through is definitely not true. Now, there are some other common mistakes when you write papers. First one, please write in clear, simple, declare, declarative sentences. Okay, I mean, in order to do this, the rule, 
avoid long sentences. 30 plus words. Definitely, if you see a 30 plus words in a paper, you need to revise. And if you have written a long sentence, more than 30 words, please revise. By doing so, you will avoid the kind of like hard to understand, uh, tortuous, and a compound sentence that go on forever. And when you consider use a comma, continuing the sentence, always stop and ask yourself whether it will be, it will be better if you use a period instead. Would the smaller, less complicated sentence be more easily comprehended by the reviewer? Okay. Always use the subject, verb, object sentences with doers and action. Avoid long sentences. Avoid clutter words plus phrases, like those kind of bad examples. If you want to say except, don't use those kind of clutter words and with the possible exception of due to the fact that that is because and it could not. Just use could not, okay? And for the purpose of something, that is for something. And also the second common mistake, I have seen a lot of cases about the difference. So please understand the difference between strong specifics versus the weak generics. Avoid the use of cliches, like state of the art, cutting edge, and the empty uh, generities. The latter are words and statements that at first, oh, looks great, but when analyzed carefully, really convey little or nothing. For example, it is anticipated that the experimental results will at once feel significantly. Awesome, right? However, this is not right because how significant? I don't understand. Okay, why it wants to feel significant? This is, this is why this is empty generic, uh, generic because, because it didn't give any specifics. Okay, another example, the proposed hypothesis based on the strong preliminary findings. Okay, how it is based on the finding and how strong the findings are. Those are not clear. Yeah, those, those would, would be great beginnings if you go on to support what is asserted. For example, uh, we advance the field significantly. Because of what? You, you should add because. One, two, three. Three reasons that this will advance the field significantly. So this, I will take it. However, if you just tell me, oh, it will uh, advance the field significantly, this is not this is not specific, okay? This is very empty generities, generics. So it cannot be scored enough, be specific. It's uh, one of the most fundamental or cardinal rules of good writing style. Specificity and precision are what build credibility with reviewers. Use of meaningless cliches and generities accomplish the opposite. So now let's see some examples. Be objective, avoid adjectives and adverbs. Adjectives are imprecise and don't contribute to make a decision. For example, the one significantly. Most, most of reviewers are Amazonians because this is taken from the Amazon uh, writing style. They rea react negatively to password and the qualifications without data. So for example, sales increased significantly in quarter four due to the holiday promotions. This is called like empty generics. So you can say unit sales increased by 40% in quarter four compared to quarter four 2010 because of the holiday promotions. And also adjectives like uh, much faster, okay? So you can say we reduced the server side trailing 90 days latency from 10 milliseconds to one millisecond. These are very specific, okay? Very reviewer friendly. And you, you actually add the credibility to the reviewers. But those kind of things, reviewer respond in a very negative way and extremely successful. Why? 
how extremely successful. Okay, you can say increase output by 2.5%. Oh, that's successful. Okay, that's specific. And also for some students, I have seen many cases use long as adjectives. Please avoid the use of lungs as adjectives. This is a very prevalent problem. Consider, for example, this is like uh, we use a lot of lungs as adjectives. For example, lower respiratory tract, iron burden. Oh gosh, this is my subject. I add how many adjectives in the front. You can see that. And also total parenteral nutrition casters. So casters, I have three adjectives. So if you, if you have such lung, so many lungs as adjectives, you can actually use off, cleverly use the off, you can, you can solve many problems. For example, or, or the in, you see, this is a burden of iron in the lower respiratory tract. So this is the tract, respiratory tract lower, and the burden of iron in the tract. So this will make a lot of sense, much better than lower respiratory tract iron burden. And also casters for use in administering total parenteral nutrition. So this is much clearer if you add a little bit more explanations. Don't use lungs as adjectives. It doesn't add much more text to make things much more clear or maximally clear if you add those kind of explanation. The gain in understanding is where worth it, as will be noted in detail later. The same comment can be made about the use of the non-standard abbreviations and acronyms. I have seen some papers with a lot of acronyms and uh, you don't gain much space by using them and you run the risk of reducing comprehension. For example, after we sign NDA. So what is NDA? Non-disclosure agreement. Those kind of abbreviations should be defined or, or, or acronyms should be defined the first time they appear. And avoid jargons and acronyms as they exclude long expert and newcomers. And also please use the hyphenate, uh, use the hyphen cleverly. So hyphenate compound adjectives. If you have too many uh, adjectives in the front of a line or a subject, you can, you can use hyphen to connect them together, which will make it much clearer, which is called compound modifiers. So this consists of uh, two or more words that create a phrase to modify the meaning of another. For example, you would put a hyphen between known and term and they are used to modify the goal. That is long-term goal. An exception is made if the compound adjective follows the word that it modifies. For instance, no hyphen would be used if the preceding uh, example were revised to read the goal long-term is to do what? So this here, even though long-term is still modifying the goal, so we shouldn't add hyphen. Another exception to the rule pertains to not hyphenating when one of the modifying words is an other verb. So if you have already got an other verb, I mean greatly exaggerated response. This is okay, other verb, adjective, and then the long, right, subject. Nor is a hyphen needed for the very. If you have very, that's okay. You don't need to add a hyphen. So very exaggerated response, that's okay. Use of the hyphens in compound adjectives is not just a grammatical nuance. It's very important in helping the readers to, to distinguish between a modifying phrase and words that modify the word independently. For example here, let's look at this example, okay? Reinforce the steel bridge. Obviously here, the bridge is subject and it is built with the reinforced steel. But if you look at the reinforced steel bridge, okay? And this one actually means a steel bridge that is reinforced, which is totally different from reinforced steel bridge. Now, 
Number five, common mistakes. We have already talked a little about weak generics. Now, there are some additional weak words that we should avoid, okay? This actually causes people to doubt your ability to do things. For example, the weak words like if, okay? If we were able to do something, then we were able to do something. So this is, seems that you cannot do it. Do Y if you cannot do X, okay? But I'm not saying you shouldn't use if in your paper. Some places you can add the condition, that's fine. But you don't want people to doubt you have the ability to do something. And also try, we should try to do something. A hope, a believe, and uh, might, we might do something. Because might, uh, we can, can, or should, okay? So, and may, we may, may means may or may not. So in every one of those examples, you can use expect. So if we expect to do something instead of we hope to, uh, to obtain. Expect sometimes is a more confident way to say that you, will, uh, you can accomplish what you propose. And expect prevents you from making a mistake on the other side of the issue, which is to assert that you will accomplish something very seldom can we absolutely guarantee, uh, guarantee a research outcome. Now, those are the weak words. They are weak, weak, and it creates an impression of meaning, don't use them, okay? Would help, might bring, should result, significantly better, arguably, arguably the best. Those kind of weak words we should avoid. And also make sure you use the correct word. There are often a choice between two that are closely similar in spelling of meaning. And some of the words are commonly misused by the writer of the current applications or the papers include effect, effect, alternative, alternate, because and things, especially the because of things. If you are trying to use things, please replace it with the because, okay? And also when you try to say compliment, don't use this compliment, okay? This is not compliment something. This is trying to praise, say something good about somebody. And also let and uh, need, principle and a principle. And people tend to use them uh, sometimes incorrectly and which and that. So if you need to check a dictionary, please do so. Make sure you use the words correctly. And also singular and plural, okay? So if we talk about data, data is plural. So if you have the data are, don't use the data is, because data is plural. And also criterion and the criteria, Sarah, serum, media, medium, phenomena, phenomena and a phenomenon, okay? They are different. Again, when two or more words form a phrase that modifies another word, they create what is called a compound modifier or adjective. They must be hyphen between the words that form a compound modifier. Otherwise, the word modify independently rather than as a phrase. Then for example, it should be long-term goal, not a long-term goal. And it should be African-American students, not African-American and then students. Use hyphen to link the words in a, in a compound modifier adjective will help increase the clarity of your writing, okay? So those are the common mistakes that people make in the, in the writing of the paper. So I hope this lecture uh, shares some uh, basic tips to you guys so that you can avoid making such uh, common mistakes and also have a good structure and the formatting of your paper. Most importantly, develop your paper story and learn how to do the storytelling. I have shared a few examples. If you uh, download those papers and try to study the structures, you will get more and more sense. Or you, even you can try to uh, follow those structures and try to write your own papers. 
Okay, paper writing doesn't have to, uh, you do research, you have an idea and then do research, do experiments and then write a paper. And many people fall into this impression that you do it in this way. However, as you can see, if you have an idea and you can write motivation background, gaps, challenge, and uh, what kind of objective you want to achieve. And those kind of things you can actually write. And then you can, this, this kind of writing actually is serve as a research plan. And then you can just fill in the research experiments. So sometimes paper writing doesn't have to wait until you finish your experiments. The model could be, okay, you have an idea and then you write a paper. And then you, you, do, the, uh, you do the research. So this is a model that are used by most of the researchers. If I share with you some of the work that is done by, uh, you see, this is Seaman Peyton Jones. You see, most of the models they do, you, you have idea, do research and write papers. However, if you wanna be more effective, you have an idea, you write it down, okay? And then do research, and then you can come back and write the papers. And you should focus, uh, force uh, us to be clear and focused and crystallize, uh, crystallize what we don't understand, open the way to dialogue with others, reality check, critique, and collaboration. Okay. Writing paper is a primary mechanism for doing research, not just for reporting it. So this is, uh, if you have interest, you can go and uh, download this uh, search and download this presentation from uh, Microsoft Research website. So those are the uh, tips. I hope this video helps and help you improve the writing of your paper.